Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be discussing about Enterprise Policy as Code, known as EPAC. So EPAC is nothing but a set of PowerShell script that will let you manage the Azure policies, initiative, assignment and exemptions. So let's assume that you are working in a uh, enterprise wherein like you have a n number of subscription a number of department each department has its own subscription let's say you have a finance and they wanted to have a sax complaint and the, like you have a hr or you know like marketing they wanted to have a different standard altogether that managing all these are standard across the environment it's a challenge so typically you will be creating these initiative uh, either in the portal or you will be using Terraform to create these policies, initiative, assignment, all those things. But then like uh, it's not that easy to manage across the environment. And that is where you wanted to have a tool like uh, EPAC. So basically EPAC is an open source community project. The goal of this particular project uh, is to provide a uh, you know a capability where like you can do the policy management um, with ease uh, using CACD pipelines, you should be able to do the deployment and all those things. So that is what its intention is. When we talk about the benefits, it does provide lots of benefits. So to me, like one of the, you know, the, the huge benefit of using this particular tool, it's a way to automate your policy deployment, right? So it's quite easy. So you will have all your policies somewhere in the code and the like, oh, let's assume that you have the capability to understand your, uh, you know, like the JSON configuration and, uh, you know, through which you, you can see like what is about exactly going on, right? So that is what, you know, typically you wanted to do it, right? Rather than like, you know, having, you know, uh, lots and lots of Terraform code to manage all those things. Even with the Terraform or any other tool that you might use, it is always going to be the same set of a JSON. Uh, you will be using it. But here you just have to worry about the JSON definition rather than anything else, right? You just download the code and, uh, you know, set up your uh, policy definition, policy set definition or you know initiative or assignment whatever is that everything it's done through this json configuration you put everything together and do the deployment that's it and later you wanted to make a change no problem you come back and make the necessary changes and do the another deployment so everything is version controlled that is the beauty of this particular tool so how do we do that right so let's say like uh, you have a policy and you wanted to first uh, you know test this policy as the way typically we do the uh, any development right so you you define your policy and then like uh, deploy your policy only into the specific uh, uh, subscription call it as a dev and then like do the validation bang everything is kind of ready then you know move forward do the deployment across the environment that's that's the typical uh, application development life cycle we can always follow uh, through this particular tool. So how do we do the deployment across multiple, uh, you know, uh, environments, right? So I said like you can do the deployment in the dev environment, uh, you know, do the validation before you move to the uh, production environment or whatever is that. So this is as easy as that, right? So you need to have a global configuration wherein you define your environment. So, so here in this case, it says that, hey, like, uh, there is a selector called uh, uh, EPAC dev and the, like there is a another selector called tenant or whatever is that. So you define a number of uh, you know environments and you deploy to that specific environment. We will see in a moment how do we do that. So this article covers uh, quite a good amount of details from where do we download the source code and how do we go about uh, the configuration and all those things i would strongly recommend you to go through this article make yourself a bit of a comfortable here so this is the source code uh, so this is the epac source code this is what you wanted to download and this is the repository provided by this particular person right so we can make use of this so if you see here this particular repository has a very limited number of folders compared to the source code very like you have a starter kit, deprecated schema, blah, blah, blah. So you don't need all of these. So you can definitely have only scripts, uh, modules, and then like uh, definition. That's all you need to have. You're good to go. Let's see like uh, what is, uh, he has here. So he first uh, in the definition, 
so he has a global setting in which he defined a two different uh, environment uh, call it as the epac prior or epac dev so what kind of a uh, cloud it's that it's uh, azure cloud and what is the tenant id what is the default uh, uh, scope for this and what is the strategy whether it is the full or incremental or whatever is that so that is defined here then uh, we will have the uh, assignment so typically the way we go it's like we first create the policy then we create a policy set then we create the assignment uh, also we can ask, do the policy exemption right so in this case i am going from top to bottom that we like we can easily understand this so uh, let's say first uh, we wanted to assign a policy here uh, so in the policy assignment section we say like um, Hey, like this is the policy that uh, that I wanted to assign to and this this would be the name of this policy assignment and in terms of non compliance so what would be the message and uh, this this uh, policy set takes a parameter this particular parameter what are all the values that I wanted to pass in and what is the scope so if you see here there are like uh, here so which one is this so this one it's the uh, scope it's a epac prod so here it says a decommissioned and here in the global settings so we define a epac prod but the root level scope it's something different right so in this case what will happen is that so whatever the scope are defined at the assignment level it's where like this uh, policy set will be assigned to so so if you see here there is another one so here we are assigning to a sandbox but a different policy set so if you want to assign this uh, same policy set across multiple uh, management group you can definitely do so uh, what you need to do is that you can put a comma here and like do the deployment right so that can that can be done as well or you can also define uh, multiple scopes here so within the scope you can define multiple uh, management group uh, likewise you can also define multiple scopes here epac prod and epac uh, uh, dev also that can be done so let's see so this is the policy uh, set so if you see here so this is a policy set and uh, it does take a parameter uh, list of resource uh, type allowed uh, it's kind of a array and then like it has the policy definitions so as it is a policy set if it be having a set of policies so it has one particular or maybe two different policies here one it's the built-in policy so that is where you see the you know the uh, microsoft authorization slash policy definition and policy id whatever is that so this policy is a custom policy uh, it's defined somewhere here so we are putting it into this particular policy set so if you go to the policy definition like policies definition you will see that specific uh, policy here right so if you come over here the name of that policy that we are talking about the custom policy it's a deploy vm auto shadow so that is what it is so we define a policy so you can always refer a built-in policy or you can have your own policy as well or you can only have your own policy so it's up to us the, the way like we construct the policy set it's up to us so now we have everything together right so we first we we have this uh, policy assignment the policy assignment will look for the policy set uh, this assignment will look for this particular policy set if you go to that policy set you will have a set of policies and you you have the scope also now all you need to do is that you need to do a planning and do the deployment let's see how do we do that let me quickly walk you through the process here so first you need to do the clone uh, as i'm using mac uh, i won't be able to directly uh, install the module so i need to rebuild the code so that is what I'm doing here. I'm using this uh, build script to build. And then like I will be using that particular generated script to do the uh, import rather than the direct import uh, suggested by that particular article. It should work as long as you are using Windows. But in case of a Linux or Max, you need to rebuild and you can do uh, you, you can import that. It has a certain helper script that um, probably you need to use it, uh, load it and use it 
so then you need to create the definition folder by default the source code will not have this the definition folder so using this particular command you can create the definition folder by default these folders will be empty and uh, once the folders are created then you need to define your uh, you know global settings so here you say like uh, what is your pack selector what environment is that what is the tenant id what is the root scope or whatever is that you need to define all of those then uh, once it is done then you can do the export so basically what it will do is that it will export all of your existing policies within that uh, root scope so if you just go here output you will see all those uh, policies uh, exported here so what you can do is that you can just move these policies to the definition under the definition and uh, from this point uh, you have your existing policies uh, in your source code right so you can make a change add a new policy whatever you want to do you can do it here uh, then you can do a build a, a plan so as you see here i did create a folder called a plans folder uh, in which uh, you will see that uh, uh, plan generated plan and using that plan you can do the deployment you can also do the roles uh, plan and the roles deployment also can be done so how do we do it uh, through the pipeline it's uh, the same almost the same so instead of using easy connect you will be using your service account but rest of the two things are will be same right so you will be using your you know like just do the import and then uh, and then like do the uh, plan once the plan it's done then now uh, you can use the deploy plan so it is almost the same except that instead of uh, using ac connect you will be using your service account uh, through your service uh, connection you will be using your service principle to execute your code i wanted to create a uh, create my own uh, policy definition so we know like how do we define a policy definition right so i i do have some policy definition here so if you see here it's all about the budget it does take you know certain parameters some rules are defined so you define your policy <laughs> then now uh, you can define your policy set in this case it is going to be a single policy right so as you see here like uh, this policy definition it's nothing but your you know uh, azure policy initiative so and the, like it does uh, refers to this policy definition and you know it passes all these parameters here then you will have your assignment uh, in the assignment you refer to your policy set or you know your initiative and then like pass the parameters that you wanted to pass it and then like uh, again now everything is ready now we know like what is the process to follow we just to do a plan once the plan is ready then you do the deployment that's it so now if you go here uh, if you if you see here like you have your policy assignment policy definition policy exemptions so if you go under the policy exemptions uh, you will see all of those uh, uh, you know exemptions so you can definitely make the exemptions you can you know edit these and then like apply the exemptions so that we like later uh you know you know in a specific environment you wanted to apply a uh, you know kind of a exemption you can definitely do it through the code now everything it's in the code or uh, whatever you want to do everything it's in the code so that will give us the lot of flexibility in terms of uh, you know managing this uh, policy across the subscriptions it will become quite easy for us found uh, this particular article very interesting so it goes one level uh, down it shows how do we even test this right so we we create the policy and then like we wanted to test this policy so we we do policy apply and then like how do we test uh, everything it's okay it's kind of a unit testing right so you you do the test before you pass it to the other environment so looks like it's a uh, you know a uh, very good tool to consider uh, hope you find this video very useful thank you for watching